they require you to do other things as jobs get posted, then those get added to it. But at the end of the day, like EMT has material technicians there, a specialty item. So it, it's, a, it's an additional level of training on top of, you have to be a first responder operations level to be a firefighter and has materials. The technician level is the next level up. It's not something we require, but it does help the department. It, like I said, they have a much higher level of training. Are you saying that your department pays for those? Can you please identify yourself, please. You can identify yourself. I'm I would ask to you to also, to, rather than just throw questions at the chief, to ask questions through the chair to the chief, please. I'm Doris Cannon from Onset. I'd like to know, is uh, these credentials something that your department pays for? Uh, well, the EMT, they pay for themselves when they go. The stipend, once they have the training and maintain it, then they get it. So if you maintain your EMT for that year, you get the stipend for that year. If you let your EMT lapse, then you don't get the stipend. Um, hazardous materials technician and the tech rescue class are done to the fire academy, so there's no cost to the department other than the member going. So there's no charge for them to go to that particular training. In, in other words, do, do the, the participants that want to get on a higher level in your department do they um, have to pay for their education? No, the fire academy pays for that. The fire academy covers it. So if you're if you're a, a designated member of the fire service in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, the majority of what they get stipends for are offered by the Massachusetts Fire Academy. So there's no cost to the district for them to go to that particular class. If they take the certification exam, they, they take the, they get paid for the certification exam, and then they get they get stipend but the cost for the class is nothing. Uh, the, and if they take EMT, that's on their own. They, they pay for that themselves. And then, like I said, if they maintain that level of certification, they get that stipend annually for maintaining. They have to go to a recertification process. Basically, it offsets the cost of like them going to re-credential. They have to go to, a, I believe it's like a 40-hour class uh, to maintain their credentialing to be an EMT. So some of these require like ongoing maintenance and you know, con eds or continuing education. Do they pay for their own continuing it? Depending if it's a fire through the fire academy, no. It's a free class. It's a free class. So anything that goes through the Massachusetts Fire Academy, most of them are free. EMT, like I said, they cover they cover the initial class, the cost of one of the class themselves, and then the stipend offsets them if they have to recertify. Is that? Uh, all right. Quick, let me put this another way. Are you paying them for the time that they're recertificating? If they're on duty, yeah, yeah. So they're getting paid to go on duty, yes. So if it's a weekday class and they're, they, week, they work weekdays, yes. Are there other, other questions? Yes, Ms. Just, Morales. Just a point of clarification. The group could ratify the contract and not fund the raises. The contract would go through. It, they're actually you're asking us two different things. This body has to approve funding, and the contract language says that if the funding is not approved, only those parts that require funding go back to negotiations. The rest of the contract can be approved. But you're telling everybody they only have one choice, up or down. The funding is, is already been made. We're not transferring any money this evening. You see no money in this article. We had anticipated uh, that there was going to be raises, and we, we put money in the salary account. You know, it was approved at the, at the uh, day down meeting. But, uh, so we're not asking for any funds. The money is there for this first year. Now, obviously, in the next May's annual meeting, you know, the line item for the salaries will go up to 63. And then after that, the cost of the second year will be, will be uh, in the budget that will be approved at the next annual meeting. Uh, we're not here. Tonight, we're not asking for any money. We're just asking uh, for both yes, yes or no on this contract, on this agreement. Uh, for this year, it is funded. Uh, are there any other questions? Yes, sir. Uh, how does our 
the property salary structure for three thousand pounds in Georgia. Well, I would say that across the board, captains in Onset are, are lower paid than captains in in Falmouth, Bourne, uh, Wareham, Fire District. Uh, uh, most of the communities in this area, uh, unless they're on all volunteer. Any full-time departments? Uh, I, I would say that they're probably less than than, than the uh, the average of, of surrounding towns or town in this area. Uh, the further you get up towards the city, the, 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 you'd be shocked at the at the cost difference between what a captain makes in Monson and what a captain makes in Braintree or, or Weymouth. Or, the closer you get to the city, the higher the obviously the prices. Go. Uh, is it true that Onset's about four square miles, our fire district, in total? Yep. And Braintree is how many square miles? I don't know. Exactly. I, I couldn't tell you. <laughs> but that's not, that's, really, uh, may I, that's not really an accurate depiction <laughs> if you compare square miles. What a captain in Onset does on top of his firefighting job, like building fire trucks, doing administrative work that isn't assigned in other departments. So they do a significant different workload than a captain in another department may do. Also, just to make everybody aware, if you want to compare things, look at other communities, the call volume that is done. So our, our four square miles may generate 1,500 to 2,000 calls a year. If you go to Carver, they only generate about 500 calls a year. So just keep that, we are significantly larger, or not, we're significantly smaller, but we generate a higher call volume than most of the surrounding communities that are comparable to us that have combination departments. Are there any other questions? Not the contract. Yes, Ms. Ms. Kidd. Thank you. Um, why is Onset Fire Department separate from the Wareham Fire Department? It is the same no, I, town. I, I, I would just say that that question is really is not relevant to the discussion that we're doing on our Article 2. That's a decision that was made by, five, by the fire districts many, many years ago, and Wareham is separate from Onset. And we all read the people who have different opinions on what it should be, but it, I would like to keep the discussion to Article 2, the approval of the contract. Yes, Mr. Bessie. Um, Mike Bessie, Watson Fire District. Um, when I sat on the financial committee, uh, I asked the Department of Revenue and Legal Services uh, for a definition as to what the Watson Fire District can do. Uh, they sent back a reply, a written reply, which should be on file in the financial committee office which stated that the purpose of the Nazi Fire District is to provide safe drinking water, drinking uh, water for fire protection, and to put out fires only. So when you say, what do the officers or the firefighters do when you address it as to calls made, uh, by interpretation of that letter, it would seem that the Nazi Fire District does a lot of calls that they're not legally allowed to do. Yeah, I, I think, Michael, I know what you're saying, but we are, we are straying from Article 2. Article 2 is asking the voters specifically to approve the collective bonding agreement between the Onset Fire District and the Wearing Firefighters Local 2810. And I would say I would like to keep the discussion to the contract. Other than that, we are varying, we are getting away from what the purpose of Article 2 is, and we must stay to Article 2. Yes, Mr. Mr. Uh, Council. Move the question, please. Second. There's been a motion made to move the question. Is there a second? Second. second. Okay. Uh, it is not de debatable. Uh, I will take a vote, and if we move the question, we'll immediately proceed to vote on Article 2. All those in favor of closing debate and moving the question, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? The abstentions. It is unanimous. Okay. The vote will now come under Article 2. I'll ask you that. Uh, all those in favor of approving Article 2, would you please say aye? Aye. aye. All those opposed, say nay. Okay? The contract has been approved unanimously. Good job.
Okay, article article three before us, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, right. Mr. Hughes. I move the district vote to transfer from water department surplus the sum of thirty-six thousand eight hundred thirty dollars into the water department Gulf renovation fund number six zero zero six one five five one nine or act anything thereon or thereunto. And I would like to refer to uh, Mr. Murray for clarification on the infrastructure. First of all, is there a second to Mr. Hughes' motion? Second. Okay, the motion has been made and seconded. And I would uh, ask the body to uh, uh, approve the, our attorney, uh, Mr. Murray.